Hey y'all, I'm Rachel, owner and artist at Stella Rose Boutique here in Greenville, Tennessee. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button for me and mash that notifications bell so you won't miss any of my upcoming thrift flips, how-to tutorials, trash to treasures, and just everyday upcycling and repurposing old furniture and making it new home decor. Today is a trash to treasure video and it has special meaning to it to me. I was honored to be able to go to this home that raised six generations of this beautiful family before they had it torn down. I was able to salvage some of the siding, some of the wood doors that were in the home, and they had a dumpster outside that they had already thrown some stools and decor in that I was able to sneak out of the dumpster. They also gave me their kitchen countertops and the kitchen cabinet and a dining room table. Why would I want that? because we are putting a classroom in my shop. The Stella Rose Mercantile, where Stella Rose Boutique is at. Yes, that's right. We're gonna have classes there. So if you're local to East Tennessee, I am 45 minutes from North Carolina and 45 minutes from Virginia, and I'm an hour from Knoxville. I am gonna have classes and I would love to meet you and have you in them. So watch our Facebook page so you can see when we're gonna have classes scheduled so you can come out and see us and learn how to use any of the products that we sell. Anyhow, I've got this trash to treasure that I'm gonna show you today. And some of the things that I've gathered from them will be throughout the next few videos. It's not gonna all just be in one video. But come with me and let's see what I do with some of the stuff that was in this home. Let's go. I have three different trash to treasure flips for you guys today. My first one is I picked up these picture frames here at the local dump. There was nothing wrong with them, so I cleaned them off really well and I gave them a coat of DIY's beadboard white. Once I had a nice even coat of beadboard white, I decided to speed up the drying process with my heat gun. I decided to take out some Roycycle decoupage paper called Vintage Ads. You see me here, I am rubbing it into the crease so I will know exactly where to cut so I will have a perfect fit. I have two different frames both of them identical. I used my DIY crystal clear chandelier liquid patina. This is a transfer gel, a top coat, and a decoupage medium all in one container. With this, there's two options you can use for decoupaging. One is an iron on method, and the other is to do it wet. So I decided to do both methods, one on each frame. Here you see where I put a little bit of the DIY crystal clear patina down and you would see it a little bit at a time and then you see me rubbing it down a little bit with saran wrap to kind of smooth out any wrinkles and make it lay flat. And I did this as a process a little bit at a time as I worked my way all the way across the frame. And on the next one, I had already put two coats down, one and then I let it dry and then I put the second coat down and then I let it dry and then I ironed it. And when I did that, I put a piece of parchment paper between the iron and the decoupage paper so I didn't burn the actual paper. Between the two of them, I preferred the wet method I thought it would be less wrinkles with the iron-on method, but it didn't turn out that way this time. I then got out my Iron Orchid Design stamps in Queen Bee and in Farm Animal, as well as my black ink, ink pad, and my thin mount board. I played around with the design. When I was happy, I took my thin mount and I stuck it to the back of the stamps. And then I lifted it off I adjusted the stamps by the graph lines so that everything was even. I then inked up my stamp and I stamped the top of the decoupage paper. Once I was done stamping this, I realized that the backside, you see here, that hook 
is not at the top of the picture. So it would hang crooked or upside down. So I removed the hook, I used a tape measure, I measured out the center of the top on the back side, and I repositioned the hook so it would hang properly. When you purchase your stamps from me, whether online or in my shop, you get a free mounting board every single time. As well as every two ink color purchases, you get a free mixing bottle. So you'll have both colors of ink and a custom color that you mix yourself. After I was done stamping both frames, I sealed the frame and the paper print with DIY's Big Top. Then I went over the high points on the frame only with DIY Old School. After I was done, I decided to take a 220 grit that had been heavily used and I went over just the decoupage paper part only. Then I took DIY clear wax and went over the entire frame and the decoupage paper. Once I was done with that, then I took black wax and I went over the entire frame and the print. Not too bad for two frames that came from the local dump. Here are two of the stools that came out of our friend's dumpster from the home that they were having torn down. I decided to use DIY Dark and Decrepit on the tops of the stools. I then painted the bottom of the stool in old school. And when it was time to seal it, I used the DIY Clear Wax and I made a custom blended colored wax by taking some of the DIY old school and mixing it with the clear wax. And this just gave the bottom a real deep, dark, beautiful color. I then took out my JRV stencils in grain sack stripes and my grain sack minis and my JRV stencil brushes. And I stenciled the top of both of the stools. And then I sealed the top in DIY's Big Top. I've saved some of my DIY paint cans and I'm going to reuse them. Here you see me taking off the label and then I decided to use some brown paper bags and I stenciled them with my JRV grain sack minis and using my JRV stencil brush, again in old school and marquee are the two colors that I used on the paper bags. Once I was done stenciling the paper bags, I set them aside to dry, and then I got out my floral foam, and I cut it so it'll go right down into the empty paint can. I got out my hot glue gun, I turned it on, and when it was heated up, I took the tip and I stuck it into the glue stick. This, for some reason, makes it so it doesn't drip. I don't know how it works, but it does. I then put some of the hot glue in the bottom of the paint can, and then I push the floral foam down into it. Then I put some more hot glue on the top, and I covered it with some Spanish moss. Once the Spanish moss had been hot glued to the top of the floral foam, I eyeballed where the paper bag would need to get cut. And I did this two separate ways. The first one, I went ahead and I added the floral to the foam, and then I did the paper bag second, and then this one, I did the paper bag first, hot glued around the edges, and then added the floral to the foam. This second way that you see me doing it right here was much easier than doing it the other way, which was putting the floral in first. When I was adding the floral, whether it was first or second, there was no specific way that I was doing it. I was just doing it so that it looked full and then I stopped when I was happy. All of the paint products used in today's video, you will find on my website at stellarosboutique.co and in my shop, Stella Rose Boutique, inside of Stella Rose Mercantile at 524 Justice Drive in Greenville, Tennessee.
please hit that subscribe button and mash that notifications bell and make sure you hit all so you won't miss any of my upcoming trash to treasures, thrift flips, how-to tutorials, and just everyday upcycling old furniture into new home decor. Thank you for watching. You can find me on social media and Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, of course my website at stellaroseboutique.co. Thanks for watching. Bye.